long time, I want to see you, you know, because... See, I do a little video with a little fellow who I know, you know, I'm Nana here. Years now, we have an unsettled rivalry between me and me. I'm seeing him up at the mad scientist, Dean Charles Laboratory. I don't know where they're building. <laughs> but come, let me show you what I'm going inside. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm going to Anyway, yeah man, come in man. Welcome to my humble, humble little home where all the crazy machines are. So come up and show you what I have for them. This is the R6, yeah? This is the 2022 R6. This is what I have for them in that laboratory that they have there. That turbo, something, something, something where I see the mad scientists say I'm put together. I don't know. They look like they put together some storm, brother. I don't know if this can suffice to We go down the road you already, you know. Okay. Where, where the mad scientist Dean Shaw built a turbo bike in from 2008. Never satisfied. I'm going to bring back no great nightmares, because in 2008, they did build one little turbo something, 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 and see them with the mad scientist and beat the year giant blade. Man. One stock bike again without the extension, I use and manage them. So. And then get beaten? Yes, man. It's recorded. Wow. And you know, history, history repeats itself at times. Wow. So, we're going to save this. I got my back on the beds. No? Yeah, well, a Jamaica need to come out to see this car. Them are hype this <laughs> thing. Yeah, you yeah, understand? And look, a machine that can do a thing. So, I mean, no, I can still do a thing or two in my old days. Yeah, man. But, you know, if I tell you otherwise, you know, more than if them show up. Line, I'm gonna get chalk up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Last time I hear John Blake because him Jackie, now he's gonna get a jack with on the head, so you know. We don't have the combination that I work, but I see me with the same stock suspension and everything. I come for them with a the turbo bike there. This basically looks like one street car. I go race one race car to me. That's what it looks like. Alright, listen up. Me not call it Devo, I call it pork chops. You know, your pork chop days, you know, use some regular car beat some big car. Of course. Then it's then it not impossible. I mean, I tell you, say, the mad scientists always build some machine, but the ears them by the ass turn down. Mm. So I'd like a problem, you know, the ears them by the ass yeah, turn up. Oh, tall man. Mm. How is this? I'm not just sip on this. Leave the machine <laughs> alone, man. You, everybody will want to see what up on it, have a cup, or what? June 9th, Battle of the Belt, that be is, there and be square. That right? is simple. That is it. It's quite simple. If you want to see what they're on it, if you want to see the outcome of this showdown here between me and this ugly brother and him, Nana, eh? come. Battle of the Belt. Don't miss it. That is it, brother. No more time to Please come. Have a good day. Amen. All right, then. <laughs> Great, man. Yes. What a go on? Tall man. Wait, wait, wait. When I know call him? He called him Stiff Tongue Tall Man. <laughs> man. <laughs> I hear me. When you beat people on a regular, they might always find something to say. So, if I saw him say. If I saw him say. Yeah. But everybody will know. One and only. Greg Cross. Tall Man. You sound like your name. Your name Super C there, you know. You understand the work so you do in the, in the racing industry as it relates to bikes. It seems like everybody knows you. Well, bikes and cars. Bikes and cars. Previously, when I used to live in Jamaica, I had a little performance shop, Chisholm Avenue. Most people would remember the Black EP82 Starlet that was very successful and a mm -hmm. turbocharged Corolla. Right. It was also very successful. And then, you know, the bikes, I'm better known for like Dover and circuit racing and drag racing. Right. Cycle, you know? Right. Both in the Caribbean and here. Right. Um, how long now you had this thing, Talman? Um, I would say over 30 years. Whoa. Yeah. Started mainly drag racing, you know, the illegal drag racing. Yes. And, and transition. It come like everybody passed through. It's like lakes will come like well, a right a passage. Let me tell you, the, 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 the seasoned racers are... The the, 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 lace, the racers that race legitimately, all, almost everyone started illegal drag racing at right. some point. They are transitioning to the sanctioned races. So yes. it's a rite of passage, I think, for all racers, all right. both locally and abroad. That's right. Mm -hmm. But um, I pretty much started there. And then by encouragement of a few friends, I went to Dover and was very successful at that. But then um, I migrated to the States. So. 
I come back every now and again to do circuit race to help build the motorcycle sport scene here in Jamaica. Right. And I have a few bikes that I rent. Um, I can show you them in a minute. Right. Uh, the company is called, or the semi formal company is called Talman Racing. Right. We, race, we rent circuit bikes if you wish to come to Jamaica and participate in the races here. Ah. Yeah. How, how difficult is the whole biking? The bike, almost, to me, it seems as if the bike life is completely different from the car life. All right. It's good that you asked me because I could give you um, a synopsis of both because I do both. Right. Um, cars are more expensive and harder to maintain. Really? Yes, sir. You'll build a bike once and then it's just like little things, tires, maybe a chain. If, and if you maintain it the right way, the, the cost is very minimal, just fuel. Right. But with cars, there's just so much more to do. There's always a new turbo coming out, always a new suspension, always a new management. You know, you have four tires versus two. And, you know, it, it, when it breaks, it costs a lot more to repair than a motorcycle. So the motorcycles are cheaper. Okay. However, with bikes, I think if you get started young or you have a, a real love for motorcycles, I think it, 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 it's, it's more fulfilling to me than the cars. Do you have like different classifications of bike? Like you say, a street bike versus or a, or a 600 or a, what, like, what classification are the bikes then? Well, classification will be different from, from engine size or displacement. So mm. In classifications you have what, like this now is like a sport bike. And then you have cruisers. And you have like oh this is a sport bike yeah. meaning anyway you know. meaning it, it's more track oriented or the, the base of the bike is pretty close to a track bike or ah. a circuit bike versus some that would not have all these fairings and you'd sit upright which is more like a touring oh okay. you know so you know i could show you if you come this way i could show you a few more of the track bikes so these are full straight out track bikes that we're in whoa this is my personal bike this one I had a serious accident in 2001. Um, 2021, sorry. I broke my ankle at Dover. This is the one that everyone pretty much knows. Um, yeah, this is the one I mean, no effort to. Right. Yeah. But these are mine that I rent to different individuals. Jeez. Um, Daniel Davis has been doing very well with number 16 at Blue One there. Um, you now we just try to ensure that people have access to good set up motorcycles and them can go have fun. Crazy, you have a lot of bikes, man. Yes, man, respect. Man. Respect. respect. <laughs> and they're nice, too. <laughs> yeah. Anybody that knows me will tell you that when it comes to me and vehicles, I always try my best to have a, a, a nice motorcycle or, or car. Right. You know, I love, I love clean things. If I have a vehicle and for some reason it starts depreciating in looks and performance, I prefer to sell it than, than just have it depreciated front of me, you know? Right. Yeah. I notice a bike is almost like it have a lot of carbon fiber bits. Yeah. Um, as I say, it's a, it's more of a sport bike. So in essence, they have a street bike or a sport bike, but them 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 street legal. Right. So <coughs> you have sport bikes that are street legal, and you have some that aren't street legal. Mm -hmm. The ones that are street legal have mirrors, as you can see. Okay. Headlights and them stuff. Bikes like these for the track. Don't have headlights. Oh you know, no tail lights, no indicators. So oh, okay. you know it, it it goes by the road code and what is legal to be operated on the street mm -hmm. according to what is gadgeted in law. Whatever country in because some countries some things are not allowed and some countries are okay with a lot of things. Do you think the the art before I ask you that when last has there been any drag racing? Um, with where bikes are concerned. I know Dover have, um, now have the circuit racing with bikes and so forth. That's been happening for many years now. But as it relates to the drag racing aspect, uh, the whole thing. Well, when, personally, I have not been living in this Jamaica permanently since 2010. So it's hard for me to say, but from what I can see on the internet, very, very few. Back in the day, we, we were accommodated by the JR, um, the by Verdiels, the I think it, NDR, J NDR, NDRC, NDRC, okay. yeah, and we would go there and participate, and they would build a ladder for us. Also, Jamwest used to accommodate us, and mm -hmm. we used to have a, a quick aid segment 
where we would do it in hot laps. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that was in the mid 2000s and uh, early 2000s. It's a quick eight. Yeah, quick eight. So they would make a, um, it would be like a sprint thing. Mm -hmm. You know, quick eight mean you don't go back to the pits. Okay. When you come round, you win, you come round. Come oh, like almost like hot laps, so the fastest right, eight and those right. hot lap. Once you win, you come back to the pit. Okay. To the box rather. Um, they generally do that and accommodate the motorcycles with the cars. Okay. You know, I um I can't say there was ever a, a, a series mm. where there's a motorcycle <laughs> drag racing series as they would do with the cars where you'd have a 17 second or a 16 second or a, or a 15 second. Well, you know, hopefully down the road and maybe Bebo can tap into this where we can really bring people out, get people interested that we could really have a a drag segment for the motorcycles as it is in the states so, so you, you think it's needed or it's important it's most definitely needed because racing teaches discipline ah yes and most of the accidents that we're having now with the motorcycle is due to the lack of discipline ah so you know once people start getting into racing as well they will focus their energy on racing on a controlled area where it is safe and not in public so i think it's a win-win for both the riders the general public and the sport on a whole. Me hear you mention something too with with your company when you say you rent your rent bikes and so forth and stuff like that. Right. You think it could have be a case where even not necessarily fair for an event or whatever the case is, but maybe like you could have a day where you actually have like like you teach persons off a ride. Because right. I think enough of the times maybe they might get them bike here, but they don't know if I'm angry to know. Is that all, man? <laughs> yeah, that's so that. It's, it's funny that you mentioned that. Um, I do do coaching days and track days at Dover whenever I'm here and available. We did one recently, a week before Dover, mm -hmm. where I try to pass on what I have learned through racing in the states to the guys here locally. You know, sometimes the timing and the the, the cost that is involved in getting a track day together properly. You know, making sure there's an ambulance, making sure that there's some kind of official to do some marshalling at the track is the hindrance for us. It's always, all racing always come back to funding. True. So, I mean, if we could get some sponsorship on board, we could do a lot more. But, you know, the economy right now, the world is facing a recession. So, we do the best we can and we got support some, what, from the GRDC. Mm -hmm. Junior Barnes accommodated us on a couple of occasions, mm -hmm. put us to him and we did the best we could with what we had. But the future looks bright though, Yeah, you know, and looking forward to doing more track days and even doing more drag events once Bebo is willing to accommodate us, you know. Yeah. And I would encourage all the guys that have a bike that think it's fast to get with Bebo, see if you could get on that ladder. I mean, I don't know what size he's gonna run, but he could probably run a ladder of 16. Yeah. And we have a proper showdown in a yes. controlled environment. Right. You know, where you really, really can perform without worrying about cars, yes. boats, sand, gravel, you know? Yes, yes, and yes. Once you try it, guys, I can tell you, you're gonna be hooked. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so as it relates to the whole battle of the belts um, and the accommodations at, at these bikes, right? You say it already, you think it's a it's a it's a good it's a step in the right direction. Yes. Right? You think it's a step in the right direction. Yes, um we met Nano Head and as I say um Dean Sha we see him have a lot of bikes as well. I met Chumpy, you know, Chippy as well. Yeah. And um Mr. We meet Mr. Gaman, we meet Matthew. They may have some icons uh, um, I think and yourself where some icons in the in the in the in the biking industry. How big is it? How big is the bike bike industry well, in a Jamaica? Before before we go there, it is it is you know, I have to make mention of that name you call Paul Gaman. Ah, you know? <laughs> yes. A man is like a father to me and that's how I started drag racing. Really? Yeah, because I used to live in Cumberland and used to live in Cumberland. So coming from school, I used to have to walk from city and we used to walk by his house as a young kid and they would always him and Raja U Rambo they always were working on bikes so that's where the fascination came from really and gradually you know go to the races back then we used to race by Lake Spen right right you know, right having, <laughs> having CVX and yes. you know you know them he's a coast man you know funny enough I know him you know because yeah. him and my father are good, good bridging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Very, very, very sincere guy. <laughs> yes. He's a little rough. Yes. You know, rough, you know, but he, he might show you. He might have good intentions, sincere. man. 
him sincere, you know? Yes. So I have to, I have to big up Paul Gaman every time for inspiring me and teaching me a lot of what I know through drag racing by extension, you know, me young, so he might go start, yeah, but then you gravitate more to like a Raja U, which is Rambo from Hi Hypertech in Florida, mm -hmm. Irmar, and then um, Omar, which is Samo, mm -hmm. and I were the younger ones. I, <laughs> most of what I got was from Omar, really. Yeah. The launch bike, or for shift bike and them things. So that, when you touch Paul Gaman, you have to give big respect to Paul Gaman. That's yes. the man that got me started. It's almost like everybody said, that man, they are legend, you know? No, he is. Yes. He is, you know, from like in the early 80s, I can remember being around Paul Gaman, man. Bionic. Yes. Bionic. 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 Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. And also, I've also big up Bogle, you know, from um, LNJ Cycle. He's retired. He's semi retired right now. So he doesn't really mess with bikes, but he's the guy that also helps me with all the technical and mechanical work that I can manage. Mm -hmm. Very experienced. Oh, you work on bikes as well too? Yes, um, I am a technician, automotive technician. Ah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, those are the guys that really inspired me and we want to pass on what we know because we can't do this forever. That's right. You know, we want to pass on what we know. So we want people coming. Once you see the interest, you can give them some support and encouragement. That know? is right. That is, sport, bro. that is right. Yeah, man. That is so true. Yeah, all right. Man. So, what you want to see, all the years and the experience and the knowledge where you accumulate and things where you know, what you want to see going forward in the industry? Going forward, I mean, I would love to see where the government really assists people that are willing to race motorcycles in a sense that once you're a part of a race organization like a JRDC or, or Kenty's event, once it's registered and a legitimate club or company where, as in other Caribbean territories, you could get a concession letter that to acquire proper machinery that is built stateside instead of trying to put it together ourselves you would get a little leeway with the duty because the cost of the duty is what holds back a lot of people from, from coming here for race not only but acquiring even the locals acquiring legitimate race built purpose built motorcycles is just the cost it's the same with cars but i don't know much about how much assistance the cars get i could speak on the bikes yeah but if somehow you know the government could help us. Alleviate with the duty. Yeah, the You're duty perfectly. But think, ma, ma, I agree with the way that is concerned. Because I've raced in Caribbean territories where they don't really pay duty once the motorcycle or the car is declared as a race vehicle and you're a part of an yeah. organization. Yeah. And that would help. And there's also a tourism side to it because people actually follow racing and people will come from all over the world to support racing once. Good quality racing is happening. Uh, you're right, and for add to that, I think what they could probably do is, as you say, you make mention to tourism. Add it as a part of tourism. Yes. Add it as a part of tourism. Most definitely. Yeah, because a lot of people fly down for these events, and that include additional um support money teams. support fit fit Support fit. teams yeah. come, people that builders and tuners come, but. If you buy a bike that is built by someone, more than likely they'll come and support you. Definitely. Times to ensure that the bike runs well. Definitely. What, what turns away a lot of people is the cost. True. I remember Father Five Charlie complaining recently about how much it costs him to bring a car here to race. True. Now, I mean, I know the government have to do their thing, but they have to also help us grow. True. You know. And we grow the country and the economy as well. I know they view racing as a rich man's sport, but it's... Not entirely rich people. True. You know, a lot of people have to make personal sacrifices true. just for the love of it. True. Because if you don't love racing, you're not gonna stay in it for very long. That is true. Yeah. yeah. That is true. Um what some of your may that say your I ask it too. Why are your best memory where you have considering say I do this thing for so long? Why are your most memorable moment and one of your, why one of your most um like the worst day you can recall in a, in a, the industry? The best memory I have racing motorcycles. I can think of two instances. Yeah. All right. So locally, I the, the, the same race I mentioned in 2008. There was an event that was put together by Dean Shaw and the Lou brothers and myself and Kurt Goodney called Never Satisfied. So it was a stunt show and drag event. Yeah. 
and it was covered by speed vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we know speed time, vision. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was a running thing with Jason Britton called Superbikes. Right. And they actually covered the event. I was interviewed. Back then, cable TV was a big thing. Yeah, man, big thing, man. Yeah, speed vision. So, I used to watch speed vision. I look at you. Yeah, too, no. <laughs> I used to watch cable TV yeah. myself. And I actually, that's the day I beat Adrian as well. So, winning, coming on cable TV, you know, people start. Like, yes. Oh, <laughs> that's one of the most memorable, I could say, locally. Mm -hmm. Separate and apart from that, when I started drag racing, and started circuit racing in 2010, I actually won Rookie of the Year. Really? Yes from the JRDC and I think a, a bike hasn't won that since. So my first year racing circuit, I won the B-Class Championship. In most of the races, I beat some of the A-Class riders and I won Rookie of the Year. You're gifted. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a gift, I could say that. At this point, I can say that, that riding motorcycles is a gift. Yeah. You know, and I'm an adrenaline junkie, a speed person. Everyone that knows me know that. Um, overseas now, uh, uh, the biggest accomplishment was about when I won Jaguar Islands in St. Lucia over the guys from Grenada and Trinidad and St. Lucia. And in the finals, I was running against a guy named Harsey. At the time, he was running a Hayabusa and I had my Jigsaw 1000 over there. It wasn't even my bike, it was a borrowed bike because they just brought me in and got a bike for me to run. And you know, I told the guy I was going to beat him on one wheel. <laughs> and after second year, I was up in the year because I realized he was having difficulties with his bike. Mm -hmm. And uh, we faced off in the finals and I beat him. And that's the first I had ever won a big event internationally. Jeez. Yeah. That was a very, very big moment for me. Right. Yeah. What well, one of the. The worst? The worst moment, no. My worst moment is when I broke my arm clad over in 2021. First race meet after COVID and. Had a brake failure, corner one, and you know, I, I pressed the eject button. Yeah. You know, at, at a high rate of speed, went into the tire wall, and um, you know, sustained some serious injuries. I had to fly out almost immediately, and um, the two surgeries. Whoa. Thank God, you know, the foot is mm -hmm. still with us. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not the same. Now. Yeah. That's my worst moment. Separate and apart from that, you know, we have our little mm -hmm. story, okay. like, um, you know, you see a crowd of people and you're a ride and you just feel like Papa Wheelie. And yeah. For some reason, the bike says, Get to it. Why do I always the bikes love yeah, shaving yeah, a crowd? So, <laughs> after that, I learned my lesson. My <laughs> <laughs> worst one with that was when the first punch that was held at the stadium, mm -hmm. Marlon Fletcher Cutter, he was wheeling one direction, I was coming wheeling the opposite direction. When we both landed and he saw me, he jumped off his bike and I slammed into it. And then I, I was thrown off, I got up, I took up the bike, but never realized that the front brakes were messed up. So I shame, I jump on the bike and turn around to ride off. Then no brakes again. Jesus! To the guardrail. God help Two my times, dear. one time. Yeah, I'm not a lot of stories, For me to give you stories, bro, believe me, I would, we, it would be a whole day. God As I'm saying, 30 plus years, I, 30 plus oh years, I, bro. Gosh! A lot of drama, a lot of drama. <laughs> And even now that me and him have a lot of history, me and Matthew have a lot of history. Yeah. Yeah, and he had a Japanese guy named Taki. Oh my God, man. We used to beat Taki till him learn English. <laughs> you understand? We have a lot of drama and a lot of memories. I remember a lot of guys coming for race Bionic and we did as a technical support from a very, very young age. Yeah, and, and some of those guys are no longer with us. RIP to the race as cause. Unfortunately, with motorcycles, the fatality rate is high. Yeah. So, you know, you lose a lot of friends over 30 plus years, a lot of people, you know, a lot of friends. So, you know, most I can say to the guys, wear your safety gears, try and be as cautious as possible. Don't do it for the crowd, the crowd will get you, you know? Yes. And save the racing for the track. Yes, That's yes. It. That's all I can My first vehicle. Would have been a bike, you know, because my father, my girl comes to my father's bike. My father had like several bikes one time. As I say, he used to link with us right. again, man. Right. So he did have Aprilia and Ducati and all of them, you know, right. type of bikes there. And me did one going out of the world. Yeah. And my first bike, my seat for action, and my other bike was an F4i. Mm -hmm. And my father said to me, I don't want you going out because my father crashed off a bike and he was sitting there. Yeah. And I said to me, the time 
in a my era different from your era because the amount of vehicles on the road now we never have so much vehicle back then and them have less respect for even for bikers now right. so me know why your bitch said that word, but yeah. so me end up on the car route right, right. <laughs> well for me boy i could i could share that sentiment when you look back at what you used to do and see how risky it was you know you realize that god was really holding you up you know? yeah yeah, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of near misses, mm -hmm. a lot of near misses, and like I said, a lot of people that we know never even got a second chance. You know? Yeah. So, you know, we have to just try educate the young, try and get them to come to events like this, come race in a legitimate, safe environment. You know, don't worry about the crowd. The crowd will be at a safe distance watching. You know, and just right. come and support the event. True. Definitely. You say you race all over the Caribbean and all over the world, right? Not all over the world, in the States and the Caribbean. In the States and in the Caribbean, right? Which right. is a, that's a lot of places. Mm -hmm. Zin. What are some of the things that you think we could have taken, the positive things we could have taken from freedom culture or the way of them implement things and uh, injecting our own to make it better? All right. Firstly, like I said earlier, support from the government. Yeah. You know, and um, as it relates to other aspects of the racing, we would need an official race series. Yeah. So what I can say I've seen when you go Guyana, when you go Barbados, when you go Trinidad, is that their clubs are very organized. Not saying that ours aren't, but they're more united than what I see happening in Jamaica. Yeah. There's too much infighting within the clubs here. Yeah. You know, and then we have a watchdog group. For, for one, probably I should use a better word, but I, would, I see that way, the JMMC, and to me, they govern, you understand, but I want to see them help develop. More. Develop the sport. Not just govern. Yeah, but develop help it. Help to develop more. Yeah. However they could do it, they have to look into that. But I think if the governing body helps to develop the racers, not just the organizers, and tell racers what to do, but help them to grow yeah. individually as racers. Yeah, if, if you see, yeah, for true. Better. So you can have a GRDC and, you know, a, a circuit and da 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 da, and then you just have the governing body, which is a JMMC, the issues. I don't know in its entirety what they do, but I would love to see them help build the sport. I know they have nothing to do with motorcycles because they are FIA. And I think this is F F A M R F I M. I can't remember what the motorcycles are. And even in that, they are lacking because the, the room is there for a motorcycle to come on board and be mainstream and be a part of what they're doing. And it's just for someone to be certified so that they could start sanctioning motorcycle events. You know, and I don't know what's the hold up. It's been mm -hmm. like 13 years and, you know, this is what I'm saying. Help us to grow the product don't just govern. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, and sometimes I've seen instances where they're not very flexible. Yeah. And you have to be flexible, especially with people that are willing or have nothing to put up money to invest in racing. True. I think we have to take a different approach. You can't be too strong handed. That's what I see a lot of what is happening in Jamaica. They're being strong handed with one set of people and then the other set of people. You know, it's like a double standard. That's true. Just assist everyone to make the field grow. I want to see a field of inclusion and not exclusion. That's right. That is what is one of the biggest things I see different in other Caribbean territories versus here. The true. guys here is almost like a modeling thing or a hype thing. Yeah. There's no true unity. When you go to other territories, you see the unity, you see them support each other. True. Yeah. But go Antigua, I tell you, the atmosphere alone different. Different, man. And the people are more into it. Yo. The people, you know, the people them come and race. National like, last time. Yeah. Yo. When we go there, it, 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 it's a treat new to me, the culture new to me. I hope just the, the behavior and the mannerism of the people, them, I hold them, them love them sport like. Yeah. And of the hype. But that comes, as I said, from the government. And, and the government love it too for true. That's it. If it's so, true. So if you're if it comes from the higher level, because I remember days when we go to Dover, you'd see the Ministry of Sport. You'd see politicians there. I've been to Dover and see even Michael Legion there flying yeah. up and come. So I mean, when we get that kind of support, that kind of it, it, it forces a lot of people that would turn away to come and be a part of it. 
So we just need everybody to come on board, come together. Not saying it to knock anybody, so I don't want Stephen, you know you're my boy. You know, all the people in the JMMC, I, I'm kudos to you. Mr. Khan, all on, you, you know, it's not to knock you guys, but I'm just saying, I'm Chris Elliott and them man, you know them and that part of them stuff. They just come together and let's see how we can grow the sport. Yeah, grow it. Don't make it yeah. die. Don't make it die because, you know, people lose interest. Just like rally, rally yeah. practically dead. But, you know, like all genre sports, it, it have a, a, a time when it take a dip. Yeah. And then it's up because drag racing was kind of dead here. And it was dying. Debo and Father Five come and re-inject some life in it. Yeah. And now everybody's building, you know, everybody trying to make the grip. Yeah. You know, Kenty came along to see how yeah. better about somebody to just inject some, yeah. you know, some effort. It was sure he said it can be done. It can be done. And don't be deterred by the facts of some people. The naysayers are always there. Always, always. Never a, yeah. like a negative and positive make the thing work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we still I tell Nana Head, say, he must have to get himself together. <laughs> still I tell the mad scientists, say, to ask them where he's the Kawasaki, then he is. <laughs> yeah, then he is a flop, so. Yeah. <laughs> negative. You know? But Dean, I'm a boy, I'm a big respect to Dean. Big up, yeah, I'm a big up. You know, I'm a peeps that one. But we'll be there, man. After the race, you can drink a beer. Uh, that is it. That is it. <laughs>